I've, I've never been able to even get my foot in the door. Like every time I do it, I'm like, I don't have anything that I can justify doing. I don't know why. I just, I, I am that insecure about trying to do one that I'm just like, I got to be able to make it. it, it it's, ugh. Anyway, that's, that's my own frustration. I, so No, I understand it. Tell completely. me how you got over that. How do you get over the? Because I know so many people that do it and they're like, I do this and it's fantastic. Uh, and I, I, don't, I, I don't get it. I think with doing the first one, um walter had done the coloring for that so he had done kickstarters large large kickstarters for other stuff okay and so i showed him a lot of like hey i want to do this these are my planned tiers you know are these right do i need to add things are my price points you know they had done it and all the wording of all the story and that like what do we need to add and the terrible video they want you to make at the beginning and <laughs> yeah, just sounding out here's my comic um <laughs> but they had they had all done them and some of my friends had done them the ethan brewerton the artist for cog and flame had done a couple for some of his other projects so he had done a like a coloring book for his mechanical doodles that he does oh, cool. um so they had all done them so they were real supportive and hey you should do this and uh, you know, talking to them. So I maybe had a little leg up than just doing it. And I've backed a lot of comic Kickstarters and board game Kickstarters. Oh, you have. So just, you know, seeing what's out there, seeing how people are doing it, looking at the ones that are struggling or really succeeding, seeing what they had offering. Like, why is this one different than this one? Like two comics that look almost exactly the same. You know, why is this one failing and this one yeah 400 percent. so and do you think it's through promotion or do you think it's through they have a larger fan base or they started with a bigger fan Probab base probably yeah <laughs> you know and some of it's just weird you know what algorithm you get you know scooped up in but you know a lot of this stuff is who you know you know who you can get advertised with who you can you know on a podcast like we're doing right now <laughs> so yeah so and just and that's Part of the reason I'm still I'm doing this other and just trying to grow that fan base. So we're already over the number of backers that we had for the first one, which is nice. So okay. it's, if we grow a little bit each time, then I guess that's a good thing. So, so how how are you growing it? Like, what's your method? What is a <laughs> method, or at least uh, the theory of the method? Because as we said, it's like you never know. <laughs> yeah, um, I've done reached out to a few people that have podcasts, um, people that have other Kickstarters going on. You know, we've done updates with each other's stuff in them. You know, like, hey, you like this? Check out these other Kickstarters that are running. Um, posting on just about everything I can find, all the, the Reddit forums, the Facebook groups for comics and all of that. And yeah. just messaging everybody and their brother about it that has, hasn't seen it i had it launched right before i did indiana comic con so i had a little flyer thing out for that so i i got a few from it so it's always nice seeing names you don't recognize on the kickstarters that you're not just yeah you know hitting your friends up for money so like okay i don't know who that person is that's good that's you know, true that's a good yeah. point huh so and then seeing those same people come back for the next one like okay they backed the first one didn't know them then but they still came back for the next one which is fun to see okay so i always i always like orders and kickstarter stuff from strangers so <laughs> someone someone new is stumbling across and taking a chance on it so right it's it's so funny that statement could go either way it's like yeah you know <laughs> kickstarter and facebook strangers yeah, yeah. are, are yeah. great <laughs> yeah it's great it's great love them love it, them and uh, so you would say Facebook and Reddit probably work the best for you is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, and Twitter, Instagram, you know, I'm on it. And I, I get the, you know, I'm sure people will be glad when my Kickstarter is over so they quit having to see my posts about it. So, I mean, they can they can snooze me if they want, but, you know. Yeah, no, and, and I've dabbled with that in a sense too. Like sometimes I'll post something, and this is, doesn't even have to do with anything. Like I'll post something yeah. and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to, I just posted about this the other day. I don't want to yeah. do it again. And so the other day I didn't, exp or not the other day, uh, last month I was working on an animation and literally posted every day, like here's another scene, here's another scene. Yeah. And I did that and, and um it actually did work. It's I, I just don't feel it does. I feel 
I keep thinking social media is people that are in the same room with you where they're like, oh my God, shut up. I'm trying to work. It's like, no, yeah. they don't actually they can, see a lot of it. They can screw it, <laughs> scroll through it as long, you know, and yeah, they might, if they're not looking at that right time, it gets, you know, depending on how many friends or contacts they have, right. it easily gets lost in the shuffle and, you know, looking up the, okay, on Facebook, this is the best time or uh, the Facebook groups give you those algorithms that you have the most views at this time that's and true that. so just trying to hit those windows but yeah I, that's exactly right posting more about it less of a chance of just getting lost in the shuffle